Welcome to my lecture online. Our next problem is a cylinder that has a, ver that has a thickness of about 2 centimeters. The outer radius is 8 centimeters. The inner radius is 6 centimeters. It's rolling up an incline. It has a mass of 2.4 kilograms and its initial velocity at this moment is 2.8 meters per second after it's reached a height of 2 meters up the incline. The question is with that kinetic energy that uh, yeah with that kinetic energy how much higher will the cylinder go before it comes to a stop and what will be the total distance traveled so it seems to make sense that we tackle this one by using the conservation of energy equation but in other words we can say that energy initial equals energy final and the total equation always looks like this it's work put into the system plus the initial potential energy plus the initial kinetic energy is equal to the potential energy final plus the kinetic energy final plus any energy loss due to friction and so forth. Now, to make the problem easier, what we can do is we can set the relative or the, um, yeah, the relative position of the height equals zero at the bottom of the cylinder at this very moment in time. So we don't want to set it right here because then we have to have extra terms. So we can make it simpler by simply saying this is the height equals zero position. If we do that, then we can see that this is the additional height gained by the cylinder. So we'll call that H. And then of course we need a relationship between delta D of the incline H and the angle uh, well, I forgot my angle here, my angle theta is equal to 37 degrees. All right, so how do we find that relationship? Well, you can see that by definition, the sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, and in this case, the opposite would be h, and the hypotenuse would be delta d, which means delta d is going to be the, uh, the h divided by the sine of theta, so delta d can be written as h divided by the sine of theta. Okay, so we need that. All right, now let's plug in what we know. There's no work put into the system, so that's zero. In this case, since we have let h equal zero up here, we can call that zero potential energy initially, plus kinetic energy. Now for the kinetic energy, we have both translational and rotational kinetic energy. So it will be one half mv squared plus one half i omega squared. And of course, that's initial v and initial omega. So we have both kinetic energies to contend with. At the end, we have the potential energy final, which is going to be mgh. The kinetic energy final will be zero because it's now come to a stop and there's no energy loss due to friction. Okay, and what are we trying to find? We're trying to find delta d so we can find the total distance traveled up the incline. Okay, let's plug in what we know, what these are equal to. So we have one half the mass times v initial squared, those are known quantities, plus one half times the moment of inertia of the cylinder with a thick wall. We have an outer and inner radius. So that would be one half m times, that would be uh, a squared plus b squared. Normally, if it was a solid cylinder, it would be one half m times the outer radius squared. But since we have a hole in the cylinder and we have a certain thickness, the moment of inertia will be one half m times the inner, the inner radius squared plus the outer radius squared. Of course, we need to continue with that. And then we have to multiply times omega initial. Now, omega initial can be written as v over r. In this case, we take the outer radius and we have to square that. Now we set that equal to mgh. Now h can be written as delta d times the sine of theta. Delta d times the sine of theta. Okay, so now we have everything we need and we have the delta d in the equation that we're looking for. So we're looking for that so we have to somehow manipulate the whole equation to solve for that. C, can we simplify things a little bit? Uh, well, we'll leave that for now. Uh, but what we can probably do here is divide the b squared into here and see what we get. And we have an m everywhere, so let's get rid of the m's. That makes it a little bit easier. Every term has an m in it, like that. And 
we can divide, this is v squared over b squared, we can divide the b squared in here, it'll get us the following. We have one half v initial squared plus one quarter. If we then divide the a squared by b squared, we get a squared over b squared plus one, because b squared over b squared is one, times v squared. Now, of course, that will be v initial squared. So make sure we understand that. Okay. And that will be equal to, on the other side, we end up with g delta d times the sine of theta. Now, notice everything should be known. v initial is known, a is known, b is known. And we have g and the sine of theta. But first, let's calculate it in terms of all those variables to see what we get. So in that case, we can then come up here and finish it. So we have delta D is going to be equal to 1 half V initial squared plus 1 quarter. The quantity A squared plus B squared plus 1 times V initial squared all divided by G times the sine of theta. Okay, now we can go ahead and plug the numbers to see what we get. So delta D is going to be equal to 1 half times V initial squared, which is 2.8 squared plus 1 quarter times the ratio of A squared over B squared. Now A is 6 centimeters, so that would be 6 squared divided by 8 squared. Notice we don't have to, uh, we don't have to convert centimeters to meters because it's a ratio plus 1 times v initial squared, that would be 2.8 squared. Go ahead and put parentheses around it. And then the whole thing divided by g, which is 9.8. And we multiply times the sine of 37 degrees, which is about 0.6. All right, let's see what that's all equal to. So we have, starting with that, we have 36 divided by 64 plus one. Divide by four times 2.8 squared okay. plus 2.8 squared divided by 2 equals and then divide by 9.8 and divide by 0.6 equals and we end up at 1.19 so delta d is going to be equal to 1.19 meters now that means that the total distance traveled of the incline starting from the very bottom so d total is equal to d initial plus delta d in this case, that's going to be 2 meters plus 1.19 meters. So the cylinder travels a total of 3.19 meters up the incline. And you can see that after it's already gone up 2 meters with a speed of 2.8 meters per second, it goes another 1.19 meters up the incline. Now for those who are curious about how we end up with meters here, of course we understand that distance should be in meters, let's, say, let's see and make sure that we got the units correct. So the units in this first term is going to be v squared. v is meters per second, so we have meters squared per second squared. And we add that to the units of the second term here. Now notice that uh, this is a ratio, the units cancel out. So again, we have meters squared divided by second squared. And then we divide that by the denominator. We have the acceleration due to gravity which is equal to meters divided by second squared. And this is unitless because we have to take the sine of an angle. So notice we have meters squared per second squared divided by meters per second. And of course, that ends up being the units of meters. So there you can see that it's always a good check to make sure your units are correct. And in this case, they are. That's how it's done.